Today on the show, we have Kyle Ewing. His company is called TerraSlate. They make waterproof paper and menus, so you don't have to laminate anymore. On the path to making the TerraSlate, there were some companies that didn't work out. Absolutely. And thanks for having me on the show. Really excited to be here today. Love what you guys are doing. My first company was called Gorilla Tags ID Systems. We competed in like the space where if you fall down or bump your head, somebody needs to find out who you are, who to call and how to treat you. We were acquired by a competitor, made a successful exit. And I spent two weeks on the beach thinking about what I wanted to do next. I thought for sure I could spend six months on this journey. And at the end of two weeks, I felt like my brain was rotting. And so I started a company called Testline. And Testline was a company that competed directly with Uber and Lyft. But our angle was that we drove electric cars only. And at that time, the only electric cars that were viable on the market were Teslas. So we drove exclusively the Tesla X vehicle and it was a, it was a really cool service. We had an app. It was, it was very popular, but I made a lot of mistakes along the way, which ultimately made it fail. What were the takeaways? Yeah. So I did a couple things wrong. And the first of which was I thought I needed to compete with Uber and Lyft on price. Now they were subsidizing their rides pretty significantly at the time. And so I was only charging 10 to 20% above Uber and Lyft, but I was providing a Tesla and a driver that was getting paid as an employee, not a contractor. And they had full benefits. They had a 401k, all of that jazz. And I just didn't price the rides high enough. And what that meant is that with the cost of the cars, which were about 120 grand a piece, the payback was at a half million miles. And the Tesla platform can can probably do that, but you got to make money sooner than that in my mind. It's just not a sustainable business model. I was funding it personally and I would have had to go raise money after money on top of more money. And I like to grow through profitability, not by just going out and getting more money on the market. So how did that lead you into waterproof menus? Yeah, great question. So I tried to develop a product that would facilitate travel internationally. And, and what I thought there was a need for is a backup copy of your passport that's both waterproof and ripproof. Now on the surface, it seems like maybe that's a decent idea. What I found out pretty quickly after spending a year and a ton of money on research and development to develop this material is that the people that are going to lose their passport don't know they're going to lose their passport. And the people that travel all the time, business people, they typically don't have an issue with losing their passport. My thought was for students and what have you, they could keep their real passport in the, in the safe at the hotel or at their dorm. And they would carry this backup copy with them so they could like rent a scooter. They could prove their ID and they could go hiking in the rainforest or scuba diving and throw it in their scuba bag. And it wouldn't matter if it got wet. The challenge was marketing this product. And really there were a couple of things that I did wrong. One of which was create a product where if you buy it once, you really never need to buy it again. So every sale has to be unique and that's just brutal, right? Like your Google AdWords doesn't matter how low your cost per acquisition is. You're just never going to make money in any real way if you don't have a repeat sale. Now, yes, maybe somebody buys one for their brother or their mom or whatever, but they were priced at 10 bucks a piece with free shipping. So like we just, there was no way that this was viable. And I had a hundred thousand sheets of paper in my basement, stacked floor to ceiling. My wife was being incredibly patient about that. But what ended up happening was a big pivot in the company. And I thought these passports were the, were the future. It was kind of like starting and stopping and not going anywhere with it. But at one point a guy called and he said, Hey Kyle, I like this product. I bought it for all three of my kids. Got a multi-sale. Hey, but he said, you know, what I'm interested in is this paper. Where'd you get this material? And can I buy a case of it? And I thought, well, absolutely. Like it's two for one Tuesdays. So I'll get you two cases for the price of one just to get them out of my basement. And I had this complex system of routing a Google voice number to here, to there, to make it look like a bigger business than it was. And because of all that, I didn't know who the guy was. I couldn't call him back. So I, I made the sales, shipped the paper, but then I didn't hear from him. And I thought, well, that was really dumb. How do, how do I figure out what he's using it for? And, and how do I get a referral? And so a couple of weeks later, luckily he called back and he said, Hey, this is working great. Can I get a couple more cases? And I said, yes, but what are you using it for? And what he said is that he was an oil and gas exploration guy and he's got engineers in trucks out in the field 
on a regular basis and they print actual materials with a printer that's in their truck. So they're printing stuff in real time and then they're carrying it outside and it's got it's got to survive in the elements and you know with with grease and oil and all the things and he said that there's not a practical way to laminate stuff in a truck without burning the seats of the truck so this was working really well and i said wow that's a that's a great use for this who else do you know in the industry that i should reach out to and he was nice enough to give me a whole bunch of referrals so i called all of those folks and i said hey i just got your your name and email from this guy he's using the product like this let me know if it might be helpful for you i'll send you some samples for free and so we really got going like that. And then one of our biggest industries today is the restaurant industry. Terra Slate Waterproof Paper works incredibly well for making restaurant menus because it's like laminate, but it doesn't crack and peel. It lasts a lot longer. It looks better. It's also recyclable, unlike lamination. Lamination you can't recycle because you've made a sandwich out of plastic and paper, and there's just no cost-effective way to separate them. So my wife and I are in this restaurant kind of down the street from where we live and we're friendly with the owner just from going in there semi-regularly and he said well Kyle can you print my menus on this and I said well I, actually I don't know and he said well let me email you the file print me a set and let's try it out so I did that and I went back in a few days later and he said these are phenomenal these are the best menus that we've ever had I've got a couple people I want you to reach out to right away and that's how we got into the restaurant industry and today we're shipping about a quarter million restaurant menus a month wow Wow, they found found the need. Is there a patent on the material? Like, how do you have control over that? Yeah, so the way I explain it is it's similar to Coke in that you wouldn't want to patent the formula because then you have to disclose it and that goes into the public domain. And then China and other countries in Asia can beat your patent by changing one molecule. Now it might be not exact, but it might be close enough that it works really well and they've gotten around your patent. So what you do is you, there's a series of things, but the main one is it's called a trade secret where you just don't tell anybody what the formula is and you sort of separate who knows what so that you're you're protecting your IP in that way. So that's what you've done. Absolutely. And it, and honestly, it works really well. We have a great first mover advantage. You know, there's there's people that are working really hard to catch up to us. Right now, though, we still have, after eight, nine years, the highest quality products on the market. And one of the ways people compete with us is they take a regular sheet of paper and they put what's called a hydrophobic coating on the top and the bottom. Now, that works to an extent, but where it ultimately fails is if you were to spill a glass of water on a table or submerge that sheet, the water will actually get in through the edge of the paper and it degrades from the inside. Now, TerraSlate's cool because it doesn't have any layers. It's not a coating that's making it waterproof. It's a very high grade polyester. And what's cool about that is A, it's recyclable. B, you can literally hole punch it as many times as you want. You can fold it, crease it, cut it, anything you want. It's still 100% waterproof because it's not relying on a seal. It's just one piece of material. How long did it take you to get this thing developed? It a little over a year and that's a painful process. And it, and it was for me, especially because I'm not a chemical engineer. You know, just didn't have any knowledge to speak of, of how to do this. And, and what I discovered is the way you get to the right person is you start calling everybody, you know, and you say, Hey, I'm trying to make a product like this. Who do you know that might be able to help with that? And eventually I got to a chemical engineering group that said, okay, we don't know if this will work but we're happy to take your money. So let's give it a shot. The first couple of iterations were absolutely awful. The first one, we had a we had a great flat white sheet of quote unquote paper, but it was so brittle that if you bent it in the slightest, it would basically shatter. So back to the drawing board. So the second iteration was flexible, but as soon as I put it in a printer to print it, a laser printer uses heat to bond toner to the sheet. It melted in the printer and just this like hot goo drizzled down the inside of it and and seized the inside of the printer so i had to throw that away so version three was it was flexible and heat resistant but the toner wouldn't stick to it like it would go through the printer but it would just kind of like the powder toner would just flake off so okay now iteration number four it's flexible it's heat resistant toner will stick to it and like we're finally making the progress and then the iterations got more and more refined after that to the point where it was a really good product and it worked a hundred percent of the time it was the kind of thing where i want to be able to go sell it and say this is going to work great for you without saying but just don't do xyz so got the formula we're refining it all the time 
Our most recent updates are that the material itself is antimicrobial and antiviral, which is kind of cool because it works well in hospital environments as well as restaurants, things where like a lot of people are touching stuff and you don't want to spread germs. It's super easy to clean, but because it's antimicrobial, anything that gets on there is not going to grow and spread. So you won't be spreading things person to person like you would without that. How many inventions do you have going at any given time? Always got probably 10 things in the works, either iterations of the TerraSite product or totally new things, I don't pursue them all. But if you know me, I'm often handing out things, hey, what do you think of this? What that's called is an MVP or a minimum viable product. My goal is always to get it in front of as many people as I can and get their honest feedback. Now your mom and your brother don't count because they'll tell you they love it no matter what. You know, if they're supportive, they're gonna tell you it's the next best thing. But the truth is you need to get your products in front of people who will give you honest feedback and say like, this is a cool idea, but I'm not sure I would pay for it. Or this is a cool idea, but have you thought about it like this? And often those are the moments where you realize the true nature of the business and how you should position it in the market. One thing I see a lot of other entrepreneurs do is protect their ideas to the nth degree. They'll say things like, hey Kyle, I got this new product. I'm really excited about it, but I can't tell you what it is. In my mind, there's the potential that somebody rips off your idea, but it's so unlikely that it's better to get your product out there and get some feedback and improve it and risk somebody rips it off. Because the truth is most people have a job that they're not really gonna bail on to pursue your idea instead of, and they're not gonna, if they're entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, they probably have a product or a series of products, they're not gonna rip yours off with the same level of passion and follow through that you're gonna put into it. So your your risk is really a lot lower than you might think. So if, if you have a product, put it in people's hands, send it out for free, send it to bloggers, send it to anybody that will give you feedback and say, hey, I want you to tell me what you actually think. And if they like it, say, okay, with your own hard earned dollars, what would you actually pay for this? And they'll, and they'll tell you, you know, your mom will tell you it's they'll buy it for a million dollars or whatever they think you want to hear, whatever makes you happy. But when you frame it like, okay, with your actual money, how much money would you fork over to have this? And then all of a sudden people with that frame of mind get a lot more realistic in what they pay instead of throwing out like, oh, a hundred bucks or 20 bucks or a thousand bucks. They'll say something like, you know, I might pay $10, but I definitely wouldn't pay 20 or, or whatever the range is in their mind. So people in your network, they're always getting prototypes in the mail from you? Absolutely. I'm, I'm often like posting on various Slack channels. Hey, I've got a new product. Here's the link and a code. Like if you want to order it, just do it. And and sometimes those links get shared around. Now, if it, if it explodes and I don't have enough prototypes, I, I shut it off or I just put like a, a fixed quantity. But yeah, I, I love honest feedback because it used to be the kind of thing I was af afraid of. Like, well, you just don't understand it. And the reality is they really do understand it. They're giving you honest feedback that it's just not that good of an idea potentially. And that, that hurts. But once you've done it a bunch of times, that feedback becomes more and more valuable and you don't take it so personally when they're like, hey, you know what? This isn't the product for me. I maybe see the value, but I wouldn't buy it. What was one of those products that you really thought was going to be a winner and then the feedback changed your entire thought process on it? <laughs> oh man, so, so many. I mean, like the, the waterproof passports is a perfect example of that. And that's why I started doing it because I didn't put them in people's hands. They would have told me right away, hey, this isn't that great. Like I, I wouldn't pay for this because I don't think I need it. And so after that was really when I started doing this. And one of the things that we prototyped was a waterproof notebook and we developed a specific type of paper that's inexpensive enough to make a notebook from. We call that Hydronote. And these are highly water resistant, but not totally waterproof notebooks. Like you wouldn't take it scuba diving. I mean, you could, but it's more for, you're gonna use it out in the rain. It's gonna get wet on and off, but, it, but it's not gonna be underwater for forever. And I gave 250 of those away and I got a lot of feedback. People said, I really like this. And you know, the original ones had paper that had some maybe deficiencies and their feedback was really helpful. Like, hey, it works really well, but for some reason, when I spill wine on it, the pages do this. And I'm like, okay, yeah, we had not tested that yet, but that's that's like a real world thing that would happen. Somebody would spill wine. And if it's a waterproof notebook, it better be able to survive some of that. And so that was a, a success story, the Hydronote notebooks, which have become very popular. And they, they came out of an iterative process of like, hey, here's a free one. Let me know what you think. And then here's the new version. Hey, you make some cool stuff, man. You're an inventor entrepreneur, a bit of a mix, which is rare. You don't normally see that. So yeah, it's... yeah. I definitely am on the, like the business side of things. But what I often tell people is that 
the road is littered with good ideas. Everybody's got a good idea. The only thing that makes you an entrepreneur versus like an idea guy and what gets you paid is the ability to execute on it. So, hey, you have a good idea. All right, let's get a prototype and let's see if we can find a manufacturer or develop that process or whatever you need to do and then make some money. Ideas are basically worth nothing other than they're fun. It's, it's all about who can execute. That's for sure. And sounds like you know how to execute as well as invent, which is it's a good skill set to have. So Kyle, if our listeners wanted to reach out to you or learn about TerraSlate, how could they do so? Yeah, LinkedIn is great at Kyle Ewing or linkedin.com slash Kyle Ewing. Hit me up, ask me a question. I'm always available. And TerraSlate is terraslate.com. I always like to finish any type of an interview by saying a good referral for me. And I recommend that you guys all do that. Like don't miss the opportunity. So a good referral for me is somebody that owns a restaurant because I make great waterproof menus. Well, thank you, Kyle, for being on the show. And if you guys own restaurants, you should call Kyle to save you some money on your menus. And thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design and Development. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.